Good evening and a very warm welcome to the International Lighting Summit webinar series. Trust all is well and hope that you and your families are staying safe. On behalf of ABEC Exhibition and Conferences Private Limited and the IT Group, it's my privilege to welcome you all. The theme for today is Wellness Lighting in Hospitality. With the need of the hour focusing on health and well-being, we have got the mix of right thought leaders from the industry who will enlighten us on the same. And without further ado, I would like to introduce the panelists to you. Moderating today's session is Praveen Thampi, the Ministry of Light Creative Director. Praveen is a Bachelor of Electronics and Communication Engineering. He completed his master's in illumination technology from MIT, Manipal with flying colors and started his career as a lighting designer with Philips Lighting in the year 2000. He then went on to do his MBA in uh, international, he then went on to do his MBA in uh, international business from Apollo University, USA. Before the inception of his own architectural lighting design and consultancy, consultancy form called the Ministry of Light in 2004. He is a member of the Indian Society of Lighting Designers, which is ISLE and International Association of Lighting Designers, IALD. Praveen is also the conference producer for the International Lighting Summit. And he's one of the renowned lighting designers in India today. Richard Taylor is our panelist. He is from Graphic Strategy. Richard has been active in the professional lighting industry and the aviation segment for, for more than 25 years. During a very diverse career, he has been a response, he has been responsible for product design, customization, production, sales, and marketing. As well as he's been working with a few large European lighting companies, both as a staff and as also a freelance. Pro he has been involved in many projects in the Europe, in the Middle East and Asia, and with numerous infrastructure projects, such as airports, universities, hospitals, and museums. Architect Bobby Mukherjee, Bobby Mukherjee and Associates. Bobby Mukherjee and Associates, a globally established design at is a globally established design atelier with projects in several countries that believes in design is an organic entity. Their creations use rich flavors and cultural references with modernity to create unique experiences through the light and design that often blends with the location in which the project is built. Nancy Clanton, Clanton and Associates, USA. Nancy Clanton Lighting Design Firm specializes in sustainable and regenerative design. Nancy is a professional engineer. Nancy is an international standard organization ISO 2005 delegate from USA. Nancy received the 2018 edition report Lifetime Achievement Award, 2014 Outstanding Women Engineer Award and International Clean Design Award. Nancy is a member of Wellbeing Light Advisory Board Group and has served on the USGBC Lead Environmental Quality TAG. Ms. Reema Devan, Associate Vice President, Design and Technical Services, IHCL Taj Hotels. Reema Devan is a seasoned hospitality designer, innovator, and experience creator. Over the two decades of experience, she has delivered many award-winning hotels. She has redefined hospitality through the series of bespoke and innovative designs, instrumental in creating brand identity of Vivanta, Salicutions, Ginger, St. Regis, W, A Loft, Four Points by Sheraton in Southeast Asia region. A writer, advisor, and brand, brand innovator, she is currently working with IHCL as Associate Vice President design and technical services. She likes to explore emerging trends, which are the basis of her design inspiration. Mandar Zawari, Senior Director, Design and Project Management, Marriott Hotel. Mandar, an architect by profession, started his career working with the renowned architect Charles Korea 
and associates working on design and oriented projects like the MIT Brain and Cognitive Center, Boston, the Champlain Center for Medical Research, Lisbon, the Ismaili Center, Toronto. For that, he started his own architectural practice, working on residential, commercial, and hospital hospitality projects, and later joined Marriott International in 2008. He has been able he has been able to open around 50 hotels for the for the Marriott Group in India and the subcontinent. The Ritz Carlton Pune, the Marriott Maldives, Tribute Portfolio, Renaissance Dhaka are among the few recent openings. So these were all the panelists. And without further ado, I would like to hand it over to our moderator, Mr. Praveen Thampi, who would be giving the opening remarks. Over to you, Praveen. Thank you, Savio. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, in fact, I would say good morning to all our viewers in uh, the US, good afternoon to all our viewers in UK, and of course, good evening to all of our viewers in India. We have a very uh, interesting topic today. It is uh, uh, a new topic where we are talking about wellness lighting in hospitality. Um, it's it's uh, fairly new uh, worldwide. I see that there are not too many hotels which have uh, executed uh, wellness lighting and hospitality. Before I get into the uh, discussion, I'll just give a brief about what wellness lighting is all about. So predominantly when we talk about hospitality lighting uh, and wellness in hospitality lighting, we are looking at one, the physiological aspects of light on the human body. Then there is the psychological aspects of light on the human body. And of course, uh, the, the good quality lighting that is generally required in a hospitality environment to create the right kind of mood and stuff like that. So we have a very uh, power-packed uh, panel today. All are experts in the field. Uh, so before uh, we get into the details, I would want to have opening remarks from all of our panelists. We'll start with uh, Richard. Richard, over to you. It helps if I turn on the microphone. So good evening, everybody. Good morning, good evening. Um, thank you for having me along today. I'm going to have a, take a maybe slightly more technical perspective on what do we actually mean with wellness and uh, try to find a bridge between the famous at the moment discussions around what does human centricity mean in lighting and how can this help for hospitality? So I've got a couple of little slides which I'd like to share with you on that later on and hopefully then there's a good scope for discussion on that later. All right. Uh, uh, Bobby, your take on it? Um, <clears throat> well, I had experiment with this kind of years ago and um, it's become kind of more popular Can now. be a little louder? It's not very clear. I've done this kind of uh, and experimented with this uh, kind of uh, aspect of lighting years ago, and that's something that I will try and showcase. Um, at uh, that time, perhaps I did not realize it was so much for wellness, but then uh, uh, later on realized that it did have a huge impact on the end user when I've done it uh, you know, over a decade ago. Mommy, your body. Uh, I, I will really wish. Yeah. It's likely. And I will be um, showcasing that at some point in our, in our presentations. Okay. All right. Um, and Nancy, uh, your opening remarks on this uh, subject. The to be um, everything that that Taylor said really hones in. It is the, the wellness of the, the patron that are within the space. If it's a hotel, it's very, very important that the people staying in rooms feel that they can get quality sleep. And whether it's, you know, again, a little bit on the more technical side, if it is to support their circadian rhythms, 
or is it just to also give them some chances within their room to be able to layer the lighting so that they can have different moods within the lighting? And then that can continue into the lobbies and the other areas. So it's kind of painting with light. All right. Uh, Rima, your uh, first take on opening remarks on wellness lighting. Good evening, everyone. Some interesting project, and you would want to do on that. So thanks for having me. So the concept of wellness uh, lighting is fairly new, actually, for hospitality industry. But recently, we have done some case study, and uh, we will launch well with lighting. So I would like to about that, and I would like to bring insight uh, about that uh, project, which will be launching very soon. Okay. Manda, your opening remarks? Uh, it's a great topic, uh, and I think it's uh, it, it's a great, great platform now to discuss how you know operators, lighting designers, and different experts can uh, come together and collaborate and try to implement this uh, for the well-being of obviously the guests and else not only just the guests but also the associates who work in uh, the hospitality area. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, let's uh, open up the forum. Uh, we will start with, uh, of course, the hot topic, which is circadian lighting and the physiological aspects of light on the human body. And uh, why is it important? It's important both from a guest perspective, from the guest experience, as well as from uh, uh, the well-being of the staff. Because uh, in most of the hotels, we have seen that the staff actually stays uh, in extremely cramped environment, except possibly the general manager of the hotel. Most of the back offices are in the basements where there is no ample amount of daylight. And uh, so this is also one of the things which we need to really look at how circadian lighting can really help the staff and their well-being, apart from the guest experience, of course. But let's first hear from uh, Richard on what exactly is human centric lighting and what is circadian lighting? What's the myth about it? And uh, yeah, let's hear from you. So um, I'm not sure, Praveen, I think we might both have helped ourselves into the old fashioned trap, um, which is uh, over promise and under deliver. Um, I think we've been working with um, human centric themes now for approximately, I'd say, 30 years. I think the first inquiry I had for HCL installation, it wasn't called HCL, of course, 30 years ago. It was called biodynamic and then it was called circadian rhythm lighting, but it was all basically the same idea, was trying to think about how you can help lighting in a built environment, traditionally interior environments, traditionally technical environments, how you can help that actually be more supportive of the people in the space instead of simply being an on-off function providing a certain number of lux or a certain number of foot candles, depending on how you want to measure these things. Um, over the last uh, 10 years, of course, we don't need to talk too much about uh, how LEDs have made things uh, different. Uh, I'd say in many cases better, and in some cases easier, but definitely the field of human-centric thinking around lighting solutions has benefited massively from the opportunities that LEDs offer. Because I remember actually doing a project for a very large transport provider in the beautiful city of New York in, I think, 1996, and developing a human-centric solution for them. And this required metal boxes to accommodate all of the different light sources, which are approximately uh, one and a half meters long, uh, approximately 600 millimeters deep and 800 millimeters wide. Um, and today you could do it with an LED product, which is possibly a tenth of the depth and a tenth of the width still the length for construction reasons, but um, the situation on that side has become easier. And electronics have developed hugely. If you wanted three-channel color control in 1995, it was an expensive proposal. Um, even, even I'd say uh, 15 years ago, um, when, I, when I did my first HCR project in India for a big call center in, um, in Bangalore, um, even then um, the controls were more than half the cost of the installation. And today, of course, because of the superb work, I'm not going to talk about any brands, 
but the superb work that some of the, let's say, more focused electronics companies have completed, it's become a lot easier now to realize these solutions. So sharing then a little bit from the um, slide, I think I always like to bring to the forefront of people's thinking when we talk about human-centric lighting, HCL, what is it actually that we mean? And it's much easier if we just take those three words um, in their individual units. Well, we all know what humans are. Um, centric originally means focusing on something or focusing around something. So in other words, it's something focused around us. And the, the, the lighting part is, of course, very easy. What's more interesting is then redefining that and saying, what do we really mean by this? So for me, for example, it's looking at areas of how do we stimulate people beyond the normal visual perception? For example, how can we influence in a positive way or support? I think I prefer more than influence. How can we support the circadian rhythm, which we all have, which gets disturbed from travel, it gets disturbed from medical processes, it gets disturbed from late nights at parties. Um, and how can we bring this back into, let's say, a closer alignment with what's actually helpful for people in their ways of living, their ways of relaxing, their ways of working, and of course in the hospitality world, also in their ways of engaging and interacting with people in the hospitality area. Now, I'm pretty sure that the wonderful audience that we have I've seen shops very similar to this many, many times before. And of course, this is just serving as a reminder that the light pattern, the natural light pattern changes massively during the day. Um, but I wanted to go a little bit further for this and say, well, actually, let's look at this in more detail. And um, I, I actually bought, you can tell it must be a very good app because I never buy apps, but this is actually an app I paid for. Um, which is specially designed to help people understand what the behavior of light is on any day, at any time, in any location on the planet. And the reason I wanted to show this to you today was not to say to the lovely people of India, go and spend some time in uh, Finland, um, but much more to say everywhere on the planet there are hugely different changes. And we need to consider this whenever we're speaking about interactions between humans, between light, between our built environment. We need to consider much more how this interaction can be as natural as possible. Um, I'll share with you a little anecdote. About uh, four years ago at Light and Building at the Trade Fair, <clears throat> I visited a big manufacturer, not the biggest there, but definitely in the top 10. And they were explaining to me the human-centric solution that they were offering. Uh -huh. Please tell, tell me more. Um, and one of their key points was you can stimulate people to work harder. And I said, okay, but basically that's a bit like telling all of the members of your team that they need to drink 10 cups of coffee per hour, or they all need to be doing, going for a sporty run in the morning at lunchtime in the evening or something like this. Is it fair? And what I believe that we as lighting professionals have a duty to do is not to interfere, but rather to support. We need to think about ways of enabling people to interact with the environment in a way which is conducive to helping them feel happier, feel more alert, but also feel more relaxed. And I'm always slightly, slightly cautious when somebody says, ah, but with human-centric writing, we can increase the productivity in a space by 30%. Um, it's one of those calculations where I think we need to be really careful we can do amazingly good things with human-centric lighting, but to say we can reduce sickness by 50% or increase productivity by 30%, I think is very, very difficult uh, to accept or to allow those figures simply to stand without being challenged in a slightly more rigorous academic fashion. In my mind, of course, whenever we speak about changing the quality of lighting or light systems today, Everyone is saying, oh, well, yeah, but the market's really tough and COVID and uh, what does this mean? Actually, I think now is a really good time. And the reactions I've had from a few of my clients recently has been, let's look at this now. Because right now you have buildings which are unusually empty. You have uh, people in all the right places. I was actually myself uh, temporarily in a, in a clinical um, space last week. 
And they're using this downtime when a lot of the clinical spaces are not being used. They're using it for upgrading, for enhancements, for refurbishments, for renovations. It's the same, at least in many European areas, with the school um, system. A lot of schools have been shut during the lockdown periods, and of course now is a great time. And I would say it's exactly the same for the hospitality sector to think about which upgrades are going to help with health of the people who work in the building, health of the people visiting. How can we maybe look at differentiation? You know, how can a hotel, for example, enhance its brand and its space to the competitors with a different or a new proposal with lighting quality? Um, well-being is going to, I personally believe, become a more and more subject, especially for travelers over the next years, you know, until five months ago, I probably traveled for four or five months of each year. Obviously, I can't do this again. It will be nice to be back on the road and visiting my customers face to face and not only on Skype or Zoom or Teams or whatever. But the question is, you know, people are going to be nervous about traveling. People are nervous about traveling. And I think to think about lighting as being a part to enhance the well-being is very good. And of course, also the effect. So yeah, sure, COVID is a challenging situation. It's tough on the market, but equally, I think it's now actually a good time to look at investments. If we're thinking about the process, we always need to think um, within human-centric projects. There are three important foundations which we cannot ignore. And all three of them must be clear to all of the key stakeholders. So the first is that the benefits, also the probable benefits must be clear, they must be visible, they must be described, and they must have numbers attached to them. Secondly, the people who will actually use the project, whether that's the staff of a hotel or its visitors, whether that's the people in a restaurant or the people producing the amazing food, or let's say I work a lot in aviation, uh, whether it's the people who pay for the airport, the airlines who want to be proud of using a particular airport, or maybe just the passengers who at the end of the day pay, pay, pay indirectly through the tickets also for the airport, it must be there. And the third thing is people need to understand there must be a budget which needs to be identified and also available for that project. The opportunities in my mind are very clear. Um, we know scientifically proven, and I've done now three research projects, two with very, very large, very smart international non-profit organizations, including using sleep laboratories, including using um, long term, so I'm talking about six months, uh, tracked peer-reviewed simulations of different conditions of lighting in different uh, parts of building spaces to say, can there be an improvement of the well-being? And the short answer for this is absolutely yes, they can. Can we differentiate? 100%. Um, no offense, but mostly when you go into a normal built environment as a normal user, so let's say you go into a regular um, hotel space, you go into a regular office space, there's one switch on the wall and that's on and off. Um, so is there a differentiation if you can configure the lighting to be, let's say, more attractive to your own personal needs? Absolutely, there's a differentiation. I also think there's the question of tuning. Um, I'm not going to try and put a question out to the whole audience here, but I think um, if you write on a small piece of paper um, how many times you've been into um, a room which you're visiting and the lighting level was precisely right for you, I think that more people will say no than will say yes. The short answer is that's because as our ages change, as our eyesight changes, as our overall feeling changes, and there are a whole variety of biological factors, people's expectations for lighting also change. We know that human-centric lighting is hugely good for areas which have very little daylight. Um, we know that HCL is really good in public spaces. Um, because it generates a much more natural feeling and um, a couple of the, let's say, uh, prestige airports in uh, the uh, Southeast Asia Pacific region have invested real money into implementing, let's say, daylight natural lighting within their facilities. And we also know that it can offer solutions to alleviate tiredness, to promote relaxation and also to stimulate in a positive sense because the environment feels more natural. Um, what HCL doesn't mean, and I think this is very important that we need to think about this, it doesn't mean simply putting in colour tunable panels. A CCT tunable 600 millimetre square panel 
is not an HCL solution. It can be a component of an HCL solution, but standalone and by itself, it's a product which changes color. And this is when it comes back to the start, but we always need to think when we're talking about human centricity, we need to think about the different components that make up how any person, any one of you or me, how we perceive the building environment. And in that sense, it's of course important to use the best of technology which we have available and which is within the budget and the expectations and the project needs. But equally, it's important to consider the people and how they wish to interact with their environment. Don't make it too complicated. If we think about where natural light comes from, we always know that the natural lighting that we see is coming from a diffuse sky area, it's coming from a horizon, and the ground itself is usually quite dark. And of course, if we look at the typical office space, in many cases, that's not necessarily the situation we see. Um, I'm pretty sure that most people would prefer the office style on the right to the office style on the left. Uh, on the right side, at least benefiting from very, very good color control, but also very good indirect lighting, improving this. And I think whichever sector we're talking about, whether it's hospitality, whether it's medical, whether it's educational, whether it's commercial spaces or retail, we always need to think back to the basics, the foundations of light, the message that Richard Kelly um, distributed around the world so practically now 50 years ago. Um, think about the ambience and then think about the excitement in that space. And with that, I hand over back to you, Praveen. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, well, that, that's a very brief technical presentation on uh, circadian and human centric lighting. A little very, bit. very brief. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it, it kind of tells us and it basically covers the physiological aspects of well being lighting in the hospitality environment. What I want now is to also look at the psychological effects of light with this wanted to be moved and uh, how we can play with that in a uh, hospitality environment. And I think uh, Bobby here has some interesting projects that he can share where uh, he's played with colors and how we can improve the mood and the well-being of people by playing with color. Bobby, over to you. Okay, I'll start. This was a hotel that we did several years ago, but perhaps in, um, I think 2005 or something, where we first uh, uh, experimented with uh, uh, dimming systems as well as uh, color changing lights. And uh, it was uh, at that time for in the Indian environment, it was pretty unique where people were not really exposed to um, different, uh, you know, like one light source changing color, as well as uh, having access to uh, dimming systems. So that time we worked with uh, two brands. One was Color Kinetics and the other was Lutron. And we um, uh, took their help uh, to the fullest and uh, you see. There's the entrance porch before you enter, enter the hotel. And we played with a scene where, where we control the lighting of the entire, um, all, all the common areas of the entire hotel, where at, you know, like early morning at seven or eight, eight o'clock in the morning, it becomes extremely bright. The lights, uh, they go on to full blast and as the day uh, goes by and approaches evening and becomes night. Uh, the the light also starts uh, the the lumens start dropping, you know, and it gets more and more dark and more warm and more inti intimate. So, so this was essentially a dark space, you know. When we inherited this project, it was a renovation for uh, the Le Meridian um, Hotel, which is uh, part of the Marriott International brand, and. Um, the we, we treated the space as you know as being some sort of a cathedral where 
the backdrop that you see is actually a uh, alabaster stone but the bright light you know that comes through it is to feel like a cathedral um, you know window they would normally have it in stained glass and they were allowed in bright light to come in through the colored you know stained glass but here we uh, made it to simulate as if there's a bright source of uh, light at the back like like sunlight real sunlight coming in so when people are checking in the morning or they they're passing through this uh, grand lobby you know it's a 15000 uh, square feet space with a, a huge ceiling height you know we placed a, a glass sculpture against the uh, backlit panel so it was quite a mammoth task to even create that panel at the back it goes up to a height of nearly 40 feet at the back it was um, i took help from spanish craftsmen to put this thing together it was quite a feat for them as well and uh, through the course of the day you know like fun things happen with lighting like you see you know, these little squares appearing on the floor you know they appear and disappear through the through the whole uh, uh, through the entire day now we changed this uh, pattern to a newer design where it's like a like a carpet design all through projectors in the slits in the ceiling where we used uh, uh, these uh, projection systems that are normally used in rock concerts or for entertainment to create uh, this this kind of lighting the the bluish glow that you see coming up okay now i'll talk about that later so as you can see at you know these are lights lighting taking on the same scene through different uh, uh times of the day it starts getting darker and darker so this is the the image on the left is is like really midnight which uh, the lux levels of the backdrop has greatly fallen down and and the the lighting inside the glass sculpture comes on so the the, the sculpture becomes a dynamic uh, uh light art piece you know we use optic glass to make this sculpture it weighed it, it weighed it weighed a lot around um, 4.4 and a half tons of uh, glass and uh, base material in this and um so that takes center focus and 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 and, and, and as you can see the ceiling lights are all off you know at that time and um so we did this at a time so then so when people are checking in uh in a at late in the night you know they have already come into a cool you know like darkest space where their the body clock would be accustomed to this uh, new uh, time zone that they have got themselves into so uh but my primary reason at that time when i did this uh, like over 15 years ago was that was to create you know simulate the 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 day and night scenes through a closed dark environment and uh, you know in, in those days uh, the the technology was pretty expensive and uh, we had uh, nice clients who allowed us to invest in all this and um, it pay, it paid them huge dividends you know the after the renovation we did all the stuff they made a huge healing and their their sales their profitability their room occupancies everything went up we we continue these these concepts into every part of the hotel you know basically you know interesting stuff to do with lighting and technology like even flower arrangements you know we had light projections on them they essentially the flowers are always white in color with little candles burning next to which have aroma in them so it smells like flower as you go past this the space with a whiff of you know of uh, of jasmine or or or, or tuberose and along with the, with the light so as you see this backdrop it's a it's a it's an arrangement with where lighting plays an important role so here this is how we did that um and 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 it changes to something like this so we essentially played with very uh, cool kind of colors played between blue and green so it creates a soothing environment we did not do uh, much of uh, warm colors like reds and and stuff in in, in the public areas even the even these uh, even the staircase you know starts um starts uh, acting like a light fixture it's a it's a 15 feet wide glass staircase and it the staircase itself becomes a a, a source of light and becomes into a light fixture and it adds to the environment the, the bluish light gets onto the ceiling and and lights up the whole environment you know by by this making it very interesting 
and on all this was done like 15 years ago and uh, where most of the audience thought to be extremely unique you know resulting in a lot of footfall coming into these public spaces This is the um, a photograph taken from the atrium of the hotel. Normally, this this hotel has a 22-story atrium. You know, the footprint of this is around 10,000 square feet. So, as you as you go up, you know, in, in in the capsule elevators go up, you realize the whole floor becomes into an an art piece. And and the way we focus lights on this and this two changes through the day. You know, in, in the morning, it's very bright and the evening it becomes very dim and only a few lights come on. All those few little warm patches start glowing and the rest becomes very dim. The, even, even certain pieces of furniture start glowing in the, as the day approaches. So, 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 so lighting again plays an important role in the overall, you know, art in this project. In fact, you know, that's the, that's the atrium. And as you are descending down, you see the uh, the art, the artistic flooring done in glass mosaic, and and a, and a ground level is like this, you know, where even the furniture has lights in them, you know, even the uh, these are uh, these are actually tables that look like oh, uh, oversized table lamps, uh, which which can be admired from uh, big heights. At the same time, they they became workstations in those days because. You know, getting Wi-Fi commonly in those days was not not easy. So, you would get into this was the Wi-Fi zone in the hotel. It wasn't a common practice for every room to get Wi-Fi in those days. So people would come into this cafe and you know work on their laptops and get access to Wi-Fi. And these tables would glow as well. And these the lighting of these tables would become very very dim at night and becomes more romantic. And there's no working happening here. They change into a light fixture. Um, here too, we, we played with lighting, with candles, and with water, with light projection from the back. And uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a screen of glass. With uh, it, this was the Indian restaurant, and um, and and because of the water and lighting, we were able to create a heady atmosphere in this. Now this restaurant comes comes to life only in the evenings. You know, we played with the glowing onyx and and other light effects. We experimented with optic fibers, with acrylic, back to the acrylic, and you know, created something dramatic like this, where um, that's that that's a party room, where again the entire decor revolves around lighting, where you know these 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 um, the chandeliers are actually made of uh, woven optic fibers, and the 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 back you know horizontal striped surfaces that you see they are glowing polycarbonate, and and the rest of the space is just dark brown wood. And that's the only decor in, in, the, in the space. You know, the, the building from the outside through all the glass windows would look so rather colorful you know, throughout, throughout the evening. Now, this happens because every guest in the room is able to choose a color, you know, uh, uh, of, of their room, of the backdrop. So the entire backdrop to the room, like this, it becomes a, a colorful light source. So, so you are able to, you know, create a, a cool bluish, you know, violet kind of light, or it changes into a, a warm um, early morning kind of, uh, or, or a sunset kind of lighting zone. And it's also very romantic. It was first time in the entire country that someone had done something like this. Yeah. And um, and it was extremely well received. So when all the light, rest of the lights are switched off, you know, the the room starts looking like this, where you know the the the, um, the, the bed sheets and the pillow covers, which is essentially only white, becomes a source of reflection to this colored light. And it's um, it's a, it's a surreal environment, uh, helping in you know really cool ones, uh, you know, stress uh, that he's accumulated through the day. You know, that's the that's the image with the warm um, um, lighting mode. Now, all this was done through a, um, a control panel that you had on the side, on, on your bedside, and um, you were able to choose this. It's, initially, there was a full color dial by which you could choose a million, any of a million colors. 
but uh, we have to get you know get more realistic and come down to just uh, two or three colors for 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 the space now a complete contrast to this that was a really modern hotel but here is a, a wellness uh, spa hotel in Udaipur in Rajasthan that we did for um, it's a new brand Orica for the Lemon Tree hotels where again lighting plays an important role in the overall atmosphere whether it's the architecture it's the landscape it's the interiors so you know the, the in the daytime it's it's uh, it's a majestic uh, um, uh, building with you know strong rajasthani architectural elements but you know as as the day as 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 the evening approaches you know it, it changes and becomes more serene and and keeps a more common uh, experience and ultimately it changes to something like this where the architecture comes to life we we paid a lot of attention to create a feeling of um, of of uh, you know to make it feel like a spa or a wellness uh, space to uh, to to make it different from the you know the the city hotels that people are used to now when you see it from a distance you know when you approach the hotel that's that's the kind of an image that you see against you know the the architecture is all lit up in a in a in a dramatic way but at the same time it's soft it's not it's it's um, uh it's it's monumental but at the same time does give you a feeling of uh, softness and calmness in and it it gets into the into the into the swimming pool also we made this into an environment into a, into a romantic kind of environment the sound of falling water with this lighting which is um uh, which 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 makes it um attractive for guests to even come and take a swim uh, at night that's the 3d rendering that we did of the architecture lit up and and similarly you know there there's no really bright lighting it's all a lot of indirect lighting to illuminate the architecture and you know series of arches again there there's not much any lighting from the ceiling and all it's it's all light from down up They're lighting up all these uh, amazing indian architectural uh, elements uh this marriott in jaisalmer also we played it was a um, it's a resort and spa and uh, we worked towards a creating a very minimalist kind of in indian uh, architectural environment again through very very soft lighting which is very very calming on on the guests and and it gets into the rooms as well i have not I haven't got pictures of the of the rooms at night but you know the corridors are also like this but a, but in a more minimalist form um so that's um well bobby that was uh, so that's, that's um yeah Are you finishing? Wait, I'm not able to hear. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so, so that that was it. In a, in a short while, I was able to show you some of the experiments that we did with lighting that did um, uh, would have an uh, an impact on the end user, the, the the guests and stuff. And and as you can see, what you know we're discussing now as a new topic. we had already experimented with something like this you know around 15 years ago and it did have a huge impact on the revenues of this particular project it's a tried and tested model guests loved it and it it resulted into huge profits as well you know so they got a huge return on, on investment on all this new technology that we had used then and now it's a lot more affordable now than ever before So Bobby, did you did you get any kind of uh, customer feedback on this? Do you have like uh, collated data on this? As no, I, I I heard that from the I, I I heard it from the clients because uh, our clients had like endless uh, words of praise for this project, and ultimately it resulted in figures, you know, in terms of profitability. That the profitability was insane. I can't tell you how much percent, but it was an insane. growth in their you see it was an existing hotel existing brand same location same staff but we completely changed the entire 
decor. And you know, in those days, we spent like, over 350 crores in doing this project, but they were able to recover all this money in just a couple of years. So you can imagine the profitability that came about by doing this. Great. So that kind of, you know, uh, Richard kind of covered the physiological aspects. And I think the first project which Bobby showed kind of uh, showcased how the psychological effects of light can help in the well-being of people with, within a space. Uh, Nancy, coming to you, I would now want to understand what are the latest trends in terms of the visual aspects of lighting, which is also required for well-being. So I want to understand what, what, what are the latest trends in terms of the visual aspects of lighting for well-being and hospitality. Um, well, thank you. I, beautiful presentations, by the way. I just, yes. um, I really admire, um, Bobby, of how you lit the surfaces and created these experiences for everybody. Also, on how you, you gave thank control you. over the lighting to the people in their rooms, that they could switch not only the color, but you know the layers of light, and I think that is huge. Um, what we have noticed now is with newest lighting technology, and what you did 15 years can easily now be done with um, the new type of equipment that we have to play with, basically, and to design with, that the LEDs can actually take on new form factors. We're not stuck with the legacy form factors of what the traditional lighting was, that we, um, we can go way beyond down lights and to do different things and to light the surfaces I know Richard mentioned um, Richard Kelly, and it's so true on how do you light for the experience, for the, for the, the person, and it is, number one, it's lighting surfaces and getting that whole experience. And Bobby, like what you did, you did different columns and, and just kind of highlighted the architecture, and that is huge. And now with um, solid state lighting, whether it's a organic LED or an LED source, whatever it may be. And we may even be going with small little laser diodes that are extremely small. And we can get the most unbelievable distribution and different types of um, chips in them where we can almost hand select the lighting nanometers that we would want. I mean, that's going to be the future. We're going to look back and go, oh, remember the days of the LEDs? And yes, it was a great movement to get away from legacy light sources. But I would challenge everybody, especially those of you who are manufacturers, to move away from the same form factors that we've had and to use the solid state lighting into brand new form factors to be things of beauty because we can do that. And then with the lighting control system where we can't, we don't only do white tuning where you're taking two different CCTs and adjusting them, but getting into spectro tuning where we can actually maybe increase different nanometers depending on the time of day or increase them depending on what it is. We can actually look at different spectral um, action spectrums on how to support our circadian rhythm. And Praveen, you brought up something in your introduction that's been, I've been thinking about, is the hotel staff right. and where they work and in the basement without daylight. And I, I just, I think we really need to pay attention to the staff and to make sure that the windows and the daylight is superior. And even provide areas within the hotel that everyone can get outside. That it's, it's not just um, that you have outdoor pavilions and places where people can go eat. 
because daylight is the best for your circadian rhythm, at least to stimulate it in the, in, you know, in the morning, is to be outside. And if hotels can have a lot of the activity where people can either have beautiful windows and views or to take their space and to move it outside, I think is extremely important. So Praveen, I know you told me just to talk about the technology, but I was really excited to see the presentations and what they are doing and how do we move beyond just your traditional put down lights in a ceiling and call it a day that we have our, our Lux readings down below. I think it's very different. And Bobby showed that um, just to how do you paint with light right. and how do you provide the most unbelievable control systems? All right. So, uh, yes, I mean, uh, uh, the Liberian project really was uh, really different from the conventional hotels that we see across, of course, some brands like uh, the W hotels play around with light a little bit. Uh, with this, Mandar, I would like to come to you on this. Why is it that a large chain like Marriott doesn't allow play of light? It's usually always sticking to 2,700 to 3,000 Kelvin. And I also want you to uh, let us know what are the latest trends as far as Marriott as a chain follows. And now you also, I, I know you acquired a lot of other, other brands as well. So how are you kind of standardizing this or, or are you keeping it and uh, separate and playing playing with uh, their own standards? Uh, I, I think the, uh, the logic is uh, pretty clear. I mean, we uh, as a company would like to provide a proper uh, lighting solution for, you know, the guest as well as the associates. Uh, what you did uh, uh, first touch upon our associates, I mean, our staff who work for our hotels, because they're the ones who are going to represent uh, the hotel, uh, you know, uh, when they meet the uh, end user. Uh, so again, as you and Nancy put across, uh, natural lighting would be so important for them. So in all, so uh, this uh, uh, take on lighting starts from the very early stage uh, when we do the architectural space planning. Uh, so we ensure uh, the common areas for staff, which is usually the cafeteria uh, and uh, the meeting space, those, uh, at least those spaces get daylight. Uh, there is a small amount of balcony space, uh, you know, adjoining to it so that they can enjoy the natural light. Uh, uh, when it comes to office spaces, uh, for the last, I think, uh, seven to eight years, the trend has been to provide uh, co common continuous office spaces rather than cubicles and separative uh, office spaces for different disciplines. Rather than that, let's have a one large office space uh, with you know open office as a concept rather than the traditional. Uh, and that again uh, gives the architects and the designer uh, that extra space to you know try and implement better wellness and lighting solutions. Uh, from uh, coming from the back of the house to the front of the house, uh, we have been implementing uh, uh, obviously uh, you know larger windows and uh, provision of daylight for all the public areas. Uh, in fact, over the last five years, we have now made it mandatory uh, for our uh, bank larger banqueting and meeting spaces to have daylight. Uh, so uh, the whole idea is to get as much as natural light even in the even space, so that the guests feel more comfortable. Uh, it's not about uh, uh, energy saving, but also for wellness and well-being and how, you know, uh, so uh, by way of uh, doing so. Uh, coming to the guest rooms, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, we want to make it more simpler for the end user. Uh, if you look at... Uh, most of our hotels in India and the subcontinent have been primarily business uh, hotels in business locations, I would say. Uh, uh, and now we are starting uh, to increase our uh, uh, footprint over the leisure destinations as well. Uh, so uh, obviously, again, we would work with our designers, interior designers, architects and lighting designers to ensure how we are able to incorporate that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, 
what I am assuming is that uh, even though it is not in place as of now, but shortly you would have human centric lighting and possibly some amount of play with colors and stuff like that becoming part of your guide. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, Rima, now coming to you, I know that uh, uh, Taj Hotels uh, has taken some initiative in doing, uh, um, you know, wellness lighting in their hotels and I think you've already come up with a very interesting project in uh, Bangalore, which is going to be one of its kind in India, possibly worldwide as well, because I haven't really come across many hotels which have done human centric lighting in hospitality segment. So we want to hear from you. So uh, uh, wellness lighting, of course, it's uh, fairly a new concept for hospitality and but hospitality is a very competitive uh, industry and we've been working on finding innovative ways to design uh, wellness uh, lighting in the guest experience. So when we were working uh, uh, to find the solutions, we worked on the uh, circadian rhythm of the guest. So a project, we did a pilot project in Bangalore in which uh, we created uh, the lobby basically uh, and zoned it with various seating zones and uh, not just uh, made a difference and diversity just with the seating and like the various guest requirement but also have a specific lighting scheme going on those various zones so which is catering to the circadian uh, rhythm of the guests like suppose somebody is jet lagged that would like to enjoy a coffee so we have a swirl lounge which will have a maybe more cooler light to wake you up and um, uh, from the jet lag or time zone and you can just after that you know catch up with your meetings and you need to be more alert and more focused and uh, suppose if you want to just relax and find a reading corner or a den so uh, one section of the lobby it has basically a specific lighting which can really calm you and it's like your own personal space and the lighting is just apt for you to just soak into that space and have your own personal time, your laptop and your reading section. So catching to all that personalized uh, guest experience within the space uh, usually. Whereas earlier for hospitality, we used to just have one or two or three dimming systems uh, for the lobby, like transiting lobby from day to afternoon to evening. Uh, we still have that. Uh, we have like a specific lighting program for early morning, which is a bit on a lighter side. And then as you progress, uh, it's a little brighter and then energize more than going to relax and dimming more. So those are still there. But this uh, particular project, which we are doing in Bangalore, that has a specific lighting zones within the lobby. And uh, even at uh, some point, we thought that, you know, why do we need even signages? Let the lighting define the guest route, define the guest travel access. If the lift is there, let the lighting uh, solution define them towards the uh, lift. And which is actually, we have uh, gave some guest feedback on that and it's so, so far actually it's working very well and the positive feedback from the guest and they really don't need signage because we were thinking that, you know, let's gauge the guest feedback and see if we really need signage and then we'll place it but as of it's not required. And of course, uh, uh, there is a specific lighting which is delivered uh, to the travel access, which leads you to the specific areas like bar. You know, like you don't need to really go to the hotel lobby and look for a bar. It's just the lighting guiding you towards the gar bar because it's just more in motion and it's uh, color tuning, adding the light stimulation and guiding your path to the bar. Then coming to um, the guest room, which is, I think the lighting earlier was an additional amenity, but no more. It is a mandatory requirement, I think, because taking care of guest uh, circadian uh, senses. Um, so we are, along with that bedding program, aromatic uh, therapy, which we have on the bedside, we really take care of good night's sleep by providing the right appropriate lighting for them to stimulate sleep. So suppose if the guest is just out for dinner, we prepare the room for that. We prepare the room for with a comfortable duvet to uh, having those aromatic uh, therapy on the bedside and just the right amount of light before you just, uh, you know, knock yourself off to just stimulate your senses to sleep better. 
All right. So, uh, so back of house areas also, we are paying a bit more attention to that and how we can have uh, three categories of lights, maybe, you know, intensity tuning, because you would like staff to be a little more aware and focused. But we understand that having too much of blue, um, you know, wave light, that might also be a little depressing for the staff. So some of the areas which are identified as recreation area or lockers, so they have a bit more stimulating and relaxed light. And um, some of them like areas have color changing for the back of house area staff. Also, we have a shower, which is hydrotherapy shower. And it's basically the color changing therapy because we know that uh, color is the best healing uh, therapy from ages and Asians. So we are trying to incorporate and uh, trying to create some more uh, different insight and studies uh, to the lighting uh, scheme. Great. I mean, it will be very interesting to see uh, this hotel whenever it is getting launched. And uh... very soon, it's open for guests, yes. But we'll be doing a big launch uh, very soon. You come and experience that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I, I'm uh, particularly interested in the uh, guest room experience, where uh, because that was one area where I thought that you know the circadian lighting might not really work because most of the hotel rooms have got big windows which will automatically let a lot of daylight in. But now that you have at the angle of uh, you know putting people to sleep and getting them. That that's really interesting. That's something which I never really thought about much. Because uh, and of course there are uh, going to be some rooms which do not have ample amount of daylight, and of course there it really helps to have circadian lighting and stuff like that. Interesting. So uh, coming back to uh, Mandar now, I just wanted to ask: uh, uh, Don't you think that what whatever Rima has really explained that's something which really works well for uh, hospitality environment? Uh, I think it will definitely work. Uh, and uh, we can definitely try out on some of our softer brands, uh, you know, to bring it, uh, you know, uh, to the mainstream. Uh, however, I think uh, ultimately it all, drawing, you know, boils down to the overall investment. And uh, we as professional, we need to, uh, you know, help and guide our uh, investors and owners uh, how it will bring value to your project. Uh, so I think uh, it's a great take and uh, has to be, I think, uh, put across to the investors. Right. Yeah, I mean, I don't think uh, cost-wise is really going to cost much because uh, most of the hotels already have a lighting management system in place. So it's only a matter of adding in the circadian software and adding in the tunable wipes, which... Uh, on my assessment, on an average, it increases the cost by about 25 to 30 percent, not more than that. Because a lot of the, almost 80 percent of the lights in a, in a hospitality environment are already dimmable. Yeah. So, Publicly, yeah. you have a lighting management system in place. So, yeah. it's a matter of adding this feature. And then, yeah, I, th I think it works out uh, pretty well. Uh, well, it, it's been a very... Uh, interesting uh, discussion some of the let, let me just try and summarize it uh, what i look at it is uh, how uh, wellness lighting can play a role in the hospitality one is in the foh area the front of house and one is of course in the back of the area because that's become very clear uh, so foh yes of course you can help uh, the the lighting uh, can really help in avoiding jet lag one, two, in spa areas and relaxation spaces. Yes, of course, you can play around with uh, mood and color temperatures to basically, uh, you know, bring out the best of uh, the guest experience. And of course, uh, with this added feature, which uh, Rima just mentioned about uh, the guest rooms itself, where we can also look at, uh, because I, I was personally thinking that in India, unlike in Europe, where, you know, there is not ample amount of daylight, we could really play around with circadian lighting in the in the guest rooms, but I think in India as well we can uh, fine tune the uh, program and then look at all of these aspects as well. Um, and of course, uh, one of the important aspects is the back of the areas where a lot of the staff I have seen complain a lot because there is no ample amount of daylight and they're working under extremely 
uh, harsh lighting conditions, I wouldn't say uh, otherwise, but the lighting conditions I have seen in, uh, in a lot of hotels, there is no ample daylight available and uh, it's always fixed lighting. And that's one of the areas where I think human centric lighting can really play a role. Um, uh, Nancy, you would want to chip in anything before we close? I think you no, I, I think you did a beautiful, I, I think you did a beautiful summary of all the different issues. And uh, yeah, one thing I, I want to address a little bit of the economics of everything. I would say we keep thinking it's very expensive to do this type of lighting. But when you look at a hotel and the daylighting and giving opportunity to everyone for daylighting, is part of the first architecture. But then moving into the different types of lighting and techniques, with today's technology, the prices come way, way down and with um, personalized controls. So I think that's the advantage we have. We can start doing this type of wellness lighting um, at a very economic, um, reasonable cost. So hopefully, that will encourage more hotel projects to go ahead with us. Yeah, uh, Bobby, you want to add in something? No, it's good. It's something. This is something I enjoy greatly doing. You know, as part of my work is um, is, is is starting my architectural projects with lighting as a starting point. You know, it's normally yeah, I always, as lighting. I, I always consider you as a lighting architect there and architect. <laughs> so I really enjoy that. Normally what happens with lighting designers is that the architecture exists, you know, and, you know, the lighting designers come in and then they try and do their magic. But here with, with our projects, we start the other way around. You know, we start with the lighting and then we build the architecture around it. So, you know, first, you know, close your eyes, you know, think of a, a surreal environment and, you know, try and put together. I was lucky. I was exposed to all this uh, since childhood because my dad was into the is into theater. And since childhood, I used to help him with his stage lighting and his stage sets. So my perception of lighting was always more theatrical than it being functional. So, you know, it just so that that experience of my childhood just translated into my professional work now. So, and I enjoy that a lot. And I just hope, you know, uh, big brands like Marriott and Taj, you know, they, uh, they, they, they build, you know, lighting as a, um, as a strong uh, component in producing, you know, quality uh, uh, projects. You know, so then we can have a lot of fun because not many a times, you know, we get this kind of freedom to do it, you know, uh, to do this kind of stuff. So, but you know, what the heck, you know, we, we, we live in a really um, uh, sane, you know, like safe, you know, home environments, but those two nights that you might stay in another hotel, it can might as well be a, uh, a fantasy experience, you know, which, which you know, which uh, tingles all your senses. And, um, and I think that's where lighting can play a very important role, as like, like Reema mentioned about, you know, aromatherapy, you know aromatherapy along with the lighting techniques and you know i think it's going to create an amazing heady experience it really would work well yeah so when you're away from home for those two nights you, you might as well you know live a different uh, dimension uh great uh, mandar your uh, closing comments i think uh, i think we all uh, as i would say uh, experts uh, as part of this uh, design process for hospitality should collaborate and work together uh, to ensure that how we bring in uh, this well, uh, wellness solution for lighting. Uh, it's a great take. And if we all work together, definitely we would see it's getting implemented in, you know, uh, most of our hotels, which is a good take. Uh, yeah. That, yeah that's I, I think uh, one, one of the aspects I missed is also, I mean, now in the COVID uh, scenario, it's a little different, but otherwise when you're looking at uh, uh, you know, people traveling traveling across uh, uh, continents for long haul on long haul flights and coming for two days and going back. You know, for those kind of people, business hotels. You know, 
having a human centric lighting with circadian system really helps in you know getting over your jet lag quickly it can be as yeah. as two three hours you know like that, that that's kind of the future uh, rima your closing command that would be like uh, uh, the li wellness lighting is no more an option it's not an amenity i think it should be considered as a hotel dna and i would encourage uh, all the designers consultant owners to come together and to have it well integrated in the design and not just like an afterthought and should not be considered as just the down lighters with a dimming system it's much more than that great i mean i'm i'm really happy that an indian brand like vipad has taken the initiative to you know get uh, very very much experimental with human centric lighting and i think possibly this is one of the first project worldwide even i'm not sure but uh, in my experience i haven't seen uh, many hotels which have really done uh, human centric lighting on a full scale like the way you explained on on any project and i, I think it's it's definitely the future Nancy. it's actually Praveen, it's actually a challenge uh, to be true especially as mandar said the moment you suggest to any owners and to anybody it's just like an additional cost this is how basically it's been seen but i think we all should come together educate the owners and make them realize that what difference it can make to a human uh, behavior yeah yeah we are all, 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 all always open coming and giving the right kind of presentation on these these aspects that's absolutely not a problem In fact, I have a two-hour presentation on human centric lighting. I can open it up today, but I, I have a really detailed presentation on this. Maybe some other day we'll do a master class on this. Sure. All right. I think uh, it was a great uh, session, and uh, I hope all of you enjoyed. I saw there were a lot of questions which popped up in between. We couldn't really reply them uh, online because uh, the session was a little. Uh, Uh, moving fast so possibly uh, sabio can we uh, send these